Hi, I'm the Nuclear Rabbit and I have a problem. After decades of running hardcore, it's very rare for me to still get freaked out by the game. I miss the times where even a single hit was enough to give me a rush. It always needs to be more, more dangerous, more monsters, more stupid. But what if? What if I go for less? Maybe that will bring back the dragon. So I decided to do a no vitality hardcore barbarian and to just see how far I'll get. I start off by failing my creativity course in the character creation screen and here is the obligatory explanation of the rules for this one. They are very complicated so let's get into it. I can't put points into vitality. The barbarian starts off with 25 vitality and this barbarian is going to die with 25 vitality. Every single other way to get more life is allowed, so stuff like rune words and charms are fine. The run gets off to a great start where some cold enchanted hunters almost kill me, but don't worry, I wouldn't show this if I had died. I would have just rerolled the character and lied my ass off about my achievements like a true gentleman. I buy some scepters for early game weapons, they deal 6 to 11 damage which is bonkers this early on and move ahead and get pimp slapped by 3 head with Fizz for trying to pee on his tree. Griswold also goes ahead and gives me his opinion on my actions. Moving things along towards the Countess who I'm going to farm until I have all the runes I want. And there are a lot of them but I mostly want a bunch of Tal runes and an Ad rune. During my runs I end up finding a unique spiked club sparing me the trouble of farming for a second weapon. This makes my rune requirements much easier. Stout Nail is actually perfect here cause it deals reasonable damage but more importantly it gives me 7 vitality which means 28 life. The Countess turns out to be in a good mood at first but ends up being a dick about things and drops a million Nef runes before dropping in full stealth. I go ahead and yeet the smith's hammer while he's asleep or something and follow it up by punching a ghost in the face cause that's just how we roll around here. Some zombies end up dropping a set light belt which is Arctic fur netting me 40% cold resist. The Ontario fight wasn't too bad, I only ended up almost dying once and at this point I have 117 HP which isn't great but isn't that much lower than usual. But who knows, maybe the game will get harder past act 1 normal. Act 2 starts with me shopping for some more gear, I use a 3 socket flail with tail runes in it as my weapon of choice for a big chunk of the run. And honestly so should you, it's so good. My life total is consistently dropping low which I'm going to ignore cause I found a set buckler, it's a hazard shield. I won't be using it, but I like looking at pretty things instead of facing my problems head on. I walk through a door before realizing that the first things that can kill me in 2 or 3 hits are now a fact of life. Luckily it isn't time for Duriel or anything and I'm sure he's just going to be happy to see me. Well, no, no he isn't, at all. He goes ahead and punches me in the face. Very hard. Honestly though, that went much better than I thought it would have. I would not have been surprised if I died right here and now. In Act 3 I look at the jade figurine with a glint in my eye I never thought possible. Never before have I been this happy to get some additional life. Spiders don't care though, they still hurt and with Cesar being extra strong and cursed I have no choice but to poke the spider and kite around waiting for the poison to tick down. In the not so great marsh I hit level 24 which seems like a good a time as any to show off how I'm spending my stats so far. As you can tell I went a bit higher in strength compared to usual, I usually go to about 60 strength and I went for 70 now because well. Why not? Because Wobbuffet. Everything else from my stats I pumped into dexterity and at this point I realized something. Vitality is actually a wasted stat. This character played so much smoother than every other barbarian I've ever played. I never went below 85% chance to hit because of all the extra dexterity. And honestly the only life point that matters in Diablo 2 is your last one. It just doesn't matter if you have 1000, 2000, 3000 or 1 HP. There is no gameplay change whatsoever. The difference between 50, 70 or even 90% of your chance to hit however is enormous. So at level 24 this guy kinda fucks, unlike me cause when I was 24 the only thing I was fucking was stupid. While in act 3 I start looking for 20 faster cast rate wands cause I'm going to need some of those later on. Luckily they can be easily bought from Ormus. And do you know what is even scarier than dolls? Dolls when you have no vitality. I lure them back to page and act like every barbarian on battle.net by standing around and not really doing anything besides being loud. With the 90k I donated to Ormus for my first wand he apparently went up into high society. His fall collection is now in a price range of a couple hundred k which is much more high end than I'm used to. I ask to see his entire collection and he shows me 4 different wands I can't afford before telling me the bomb's lost and I should get a job. Realizing that I won't be able to afford Ormus anytime soon I go ahead and make my way towards the council where I let the poison tick down and make some distance because I don't want to let Caleb make a mess and explode in my face. 
And do you know what's even scarier than no Vita dolls? It's champion and ghost dolls when you don't have any vitality. Woohoo, we had all the fun in the draws of I hate this place. Ormond starts taking pity on poor old me and finally brings some old trashy wand from our back. At this point, I honestly think he just wants the poor looking guy out of his fancy store. I also pick up a 40% lightning resist wand for the Mephisto fight, our 7 vitality is nice and all, but Mephisto doesn't care and will just electrocute you, so the additional resists are very welcome. My cold resist is fixed with some throwing pots and with my liquid courage taken care of I head into the fight, which actually ends up going pretty smooth, because I have been pumping decks like a degenerate maniac I have a reasonable chance to hit Mephisto, which speeds up the fight significantly for both sides. I hit him more often and he only has to hit me a few times in a row, luckily he never ends up being fast enough and I take him down. After all that stress I go and do the only hobby I can afford, meaning I go for a walk in a bad neighborhood and point some random guy in the face for his 2 skill point. Israel seems to hit for about 75 to 100 damage, which is a mere 50 to 60% of my total life pool, so nothing to worry about here. The 2 skill points go into battle orders, which nets me about 10 HP per skill point into it and I had to repeat that sentence like 4 times cause I kept laughing at how sad it is. Not the greatest of ratios I have ever seen, but gotta do something for more health points. I introduce Paige to the worst blind date she has ever had as I settle her up with Hefasto, who comes in swinging, but not at me, so, well, not my problem. I make my way through the chaos sanctuary by taking everything once and waiting for the poison to go down. At this point I can feel how low my life total actually is, when every single hit from a monster drops the pool straight off a cliff. The Diablo fight is something special for sure, he always hits like a truck and today is no different. I start off by trying to lure him out of the pentagram because I want to fight him in an open area. Once I get him out in the open I start attacking him like he is Bowser from Mario 64. Just a simple poke from the back and let the rest take care of itself. I have to be very careful though, Diablo's slaps will kill me in 2 hits and surviving either the lightning or the fire is just a no go. Because of the poison damage needing to take down, it also ends up being a very long fight that gets down to the wire. I'm also glad Diablo doesn't take that poison shrine. I do try and make Paige survive as well, but it's easier said than done, and as her dreams shatter, I take down the demon. In Act 5, I go ahead and buy a belt with some life. It isn't much, but beggars shouldn't be choosers. Eldritch drops me a nice little helm to start off with, before giving me a crash course on how dangerous farming can actually be. I farm Eldritch up to level 30, go and clear out the den of evil and go for my respec. Cause at level 30, Warcry unlocks, which is well, a Warcry, seriously, who named this? Warcry is a spell that deals a blast of physical damage around you in the form of a circle and stuns things, so it's basically a physical nova that has stun. It also, and this is very important, makes your barbarian a caster, which favors the Diablo gods. I put a point into Concentrate and Berserk as well, for act bosses and physical immunes respectively. My wand with some mana gets equipped, only that one though, I was originally going to use two different ones for plus 40 faster cards. Rate, but because I need to resist, I decided to go for the Ancient's Pledge instead. With Eldritch now being an easy baby game farm, I go and do that some more, netting me a Berserker's armor, which I go and equip, because a plus one to skills means more life, mana, damage, resist, defense, run walk speed, and last, but definitely not least, stamina, which was actually pretty low for this run, cause it gets boosted by your vitality. The drops continue with a plus 10 resist to all amulet. And as I hit level 32, I decide to finish up my gear. After all, the hardest fight is still coming in the form of Bale. Unlike in real life, I get lucky and gamble a pair of boots with 20 run walk speed and 23 lightning resist. Meaning it is time for me to go and quest on. But first, I have to explain something. You see those twirling orange things above my head, that is called blood mana. It's a spell that can only be cast on you when your mana pool is bigger than your life pool. And what it does is that it makes you spend life instead of mana for your spells. Which, when you have very little life, is very dangerous. As you can tell from my life total dropping fast. I almost end up failing the run as the ancients break out of the stun lock that Warcry creates. But luckily, I managed to survive the onslaught. I'm genuinely terrified of Bale, so I decide to go ahead into Nidal 
Militarx temple and farm some more levels. And one of the defiled warriors ends up dropping me an amazing helmet. A plus 3 to war cry helm is just what the doctor ordered. A plus 3 skill helm for the skill my build is using. I couldn't ask for more. And with my new helm it is time to face my demons. So I make my way towards the throne of destruction. Where for the first time in the history of the game. Something actually works on Lister and his minions. Making for a very enjoyable fight. Well enjoyable for me at least. Which is most important so yeah. So I've mentioned a few times that I'm scared of the bail fight. And you can immediately see why. I haven't even reached him yet. And half of my life total is already gone. Tentacles that make me feel like a special little girl and the blood mana spell. He is also insanely tanky and can't be stunned. I had put points into concentrate but my attack rating ended up being so bad that I could barely hit him with it. And I didn't dare to switch off the ancient's pledge. So I decided to just suck it up and stay with Warcry. It takes a bit of time but Bill does go down. And at this point, for me, the run is a success. I've defeated Diablo 2 without vitality. However, I know what everyone wants to see. And that is me doing hell and suffering through this some more. And you know what? I agree. It would feel cheap if I stopped after normal. So let's go and try and see how far I can push this. Will I make it through Nightmare? Will I even see hell? Will I get the Guardian? Will I make it past Corpse Fire in Nightmare? Who knows? And all of these are good questions. And seeing as how I'm a massive degenerate, I decide to just say fuck it and let's try it out. So I go ahead and finish up normal by killing Radamant and make my way into Nightmare. My resists are looking very decent, so I decide to go answer the first question. Will I make it past Corpse Fire? Why yes, yes I will. Things definitely get tighter though in Nightmare. In the stony field, the archers hit me for over half my life total in a single arrow. And I know, I know, I'm cursed and should just go to town and heal. But we pay our red mana over here. We aren't cowards, we are warriors. And we are marching on with or without a curse. The reverse tower that should be called a cellar or basement spawns in an amazing location right next to the waypoint. Which is perfect cause it's time to grind some gear and some ruins. First up 3 near death moments in the span of 10 seconds. Second up the counters. I need 2 spirits which means I need a bunch of Thal and Am runes. So I'm going to be here for a while. The entire spirit farm is just a blur of the game trying to show me how stupid this city is. While dropping some runes. Oh and I almost find the titan's revenge in the meanwhile. Somewhere in the flurry of runs I find a set double axe. Which is a berserkers axe. The set bonus for 2 pieces of berserkers is plus 50 to life. And I seriously had to think for a while about if I wanted to use it. In the end the decision boiled down to playing to win or playing to not lose. Let me explain what I mean. If I stick with the faster cast rate stick. I will keep my breakpoint and deal more damage. But it does mean I miss out on a bunch of life. I can also switch to the berserker combo. Netting me 50 50 life but making my overall build worse by losing out on a casting breakpoint. After some thinking I decided that 50 life isn't enough to survive the most dangerous hits anyway and makes everything else just a bit more dangerous cause I'll be even more slow than usual. I decide to once again say fuck it and go balls to the walls and use the faster cast wand. A war staff of teleportation drops and because this run is hard I decide to equip it. Just kidding straight to charge it goes bye bye. Completing my first set of spirit runes I go ahead and make the rune worth and spirit is amazing for a lot of reasons, mainly because it's broken as fuck. To be a bit more specific though, this weapon has everything you could ever want. Lightning damage, cold damage, poison damage, <laughs> life leech. <laughs> I'm just kidding, no one gives a shit about melee mods. This weapon is so busted because it has plus 2 skills and a big chunk of faster cast rate, rolling between 25 and 35. We ended up having a very solid roll at 34% and if it had only that, it would be an amazing weapon. But here, there is so much more. This weapon adds 100 mana to a pool and has 7 magic absorb which is also nice but that is still not all this weapon has a whopping 22 vitality that is 88 life on your weapon like what the hell were they thinking yeah there's a reason i'm going to be using two of these this item is so stupidly good hell i'd even use it without the plus two to skills i also go ahead and make an insight for my mercenary i get a pretty bad roll on it skill wise because it can roll from 12 to 17 i craft an amulet and while it has the same 10 resist all as i have now it does have faster cast rate and some more mana in case I need it. So while a small upgrade it's still an upgrade. Keith provides me with some gloves and I go ahead and make it to a second base with Lazar. My second spirit rolls a bit worse but it's still completely bonkers. Seriously who came up with this item? It is so ridiculous. The final upgrade to my gear I'm making is a myth. No but actually it's real. It's just called myth. It's a plus two barb skill armor adding some more damage into the mix. It has some other mods but nobody cares about those. It's a plus two skill armor. With all of my 
fancy new gear, I go ahead and walk up to Andariel, who promptly goes ahead and wipes my life total off the map anyway. It's a good thing I geared up though, cause in the old stuff I would not have survived this fight. Cry sets me up for a blind date with Pratham, the holy freeze mercenary. And we get along swimmingly, I give him battle orders and stunned enemies and he gives me holy freeze and a tank, a match made in sanctuary. Radamant turns out to be pretty deaf, probably from being alone down there so long, but I end up yelling at him long enough that he goes and takes a nap. In the maggot lair I end up dropping a unique shark skin belt, which is a razor tail, an amazing and sometimes even best in slot item for many builds because of its piercing attack. However, I'm too much of a thick boy so it doesn't fit. The summoner drops me a rare ring with 10 faster cast rate and some magic damage reduction, which while another small upgrade, is still an upgrade. The Zerial encounter is hot and heavy, one side swings things around with massive crap tons of damage. And I'm also there, and I go ahead and put battle cry on Duria, which is a war cry that reduces his damage output, and by switching up who is tanked between me and Prato, we manage to tag team Duriel. In the Flayer jungle, a jawbone visor drops that is just the actual factual nuts. Seriously, I don't know what's going on, but this barbarian is running hot and I like it. With plus 3 to war cry and plus 1 to battle command, this helm is just straight up better than what I was wearing, so I obviously go ahead and use it. I run into the council looking to keep them all together so I can stun all of them at the same time. However, I don't pull it off, meaning I have to pull out of the fight. Luckily, I do it correctly and I'm still not a father. My second plan is to go again from the waypoint. This does mean I have to approach all the monsters one by one now, which looks like it's safer, but if I had been able to get all of them stunned straight away, the fight would have already been long over by now, and nothing is safer than a fight you already survived. A group of them follows me out together, ending up with me getting the stun lock that I wanted in the first place. I mop up the rest and head into the Durans, which of course means it is time for some dastardly dolls. Just seconds after entering, I'm attacked by a big pack of them. I go ahead and battle cry them, cause otherwise the commanders would be mad, and if you space it correctly, you can actually use your war cry to kill them out of range of their explosion. It's a really tight fit, but the window is there if you know how to do it. If you're trying it for the first time, I would practice on softcar. Always open your chest, they drop a lot of stuff, and while this isn't a helm for me, Pratham is happy to wear it. Speaking about things to wear for a mercenary, I drop a unique field plate in the Plains of Despair. Rock Fleece is a very solid mercenary armor, due to its physical damage reduction. So to Pratham, it goes. I lure Israel away from the bad crowd he always hangs out with, so I can yell to him about his extended car warranty until he gives me the two skill points. The Hellforge nets me a foul rune. Except for the one time I almost died to the Venom Loss, the Chaos Sanctuary went surprisingly smooth. In the Diablo fight, I end up getting my position wrong, forcing me to rejuve through his lightning beams. I reposition myself, but the firestorm is still very dangerous. One quick trip to town later, I do end up getting myself positioned correctly and go to town on Diablo. And thanks to Battlecry, he cannot hit me hard enough with physical damage to kill me in that way. So as long as he doesn't throw firestorms, I can just stand around him and tank him. Which, of course, he immediately does, forcing me to rejuve through it once more. I had been thinking about how many sockets I wanted in my helmet and what I wanted to put into them. My first instinct was to roll sockets using the cube. This would most likely get me 3 sockets, but could give me 1 or 2. The question then became, do I want to risk getting 1 socket to maybe be able to make a lore in this? So I decided to lasak it instead. Which came with my next problem, what do I want to put in it? I thought about resist runes like a Ral or a Thal rune, but like I mentioned, my resists were already good. I thought about perfect rubies, but I would have to farm those, which honestly sounds doable but boring. And then I remember there is another well known build that has no vitality, the energy shield sorcerers which uses flat damage reduction. I'm gonna go ahead and butcher some very complicated math here. If a monster hits for 10 damage, soul rune prevents 7 of them, meaning that they prevent 70% of the damage, which means that a single soul rune is worth almost 9 burr runes. My source for this you ask? Oh, no worries, just trust me bro, I know what I'm doing. So I decided to add 3 soul runes into the helm to get effectively 25 burr runes. And after having given every single person who knows how this game works a migraine, I encounter my first physical immune, which shows me the folly of specking into one point of berserk. The damage is honestly pretty sad. But well, like I said at the start of the video, one is not zero, so I managed to take him down. Pratam deals cold damage thanks to his holy freeze and that is what actually kills him. His inside also deals some fire damage because of the rail rune in there, but against a physical and cold immune everything is just bad, so I tell the Minotaur we are out of milk and run away. I get 2 out of the 3 ancient stun locked, but between the soul runes and the battle cry, Talik barely deals any damage and I very easily clear them. 
Same thing for Lister and his cohorts. Between stunning them, the battle cry and the soul runes, their damage becomes more of an annoyance than a threat. So it is time for the Bale Nightmare fight. The Blood Mana Curse is still extremely dangerous, once again making it so that every single time I shout and let it all out at Bale, I take a bit of damage. For the duration of the fight I have to balance spending my life on spells with drinking health potions and when it gets too risky I have to full rejuve. Bale fights have never been as fast as Furious as this. Luckily, same as with any other physical damage in the game, between battle cry in the soul runes, at least I won't feature in the next X-rated Bale tentacle movie. With Bale dead, it is time to prepare for hell. He ended up dropping me a maul, which is bone snap. I can now use that as my berserk switch to actually deal damage to physical immunes. Perfect timing, because hell will have a lot more of those. I end up gambling a rare plated belt with life and a whopping 29% fire resist. A massive improvement to my resistances before getting into hell is always welcome. My 20% run walk boots get upgraded to 40 percenters, and I go and craft an amulet with some life, resist and an additional 3 damage reduction. During my preparations I also come across a unique gothic plate, which is a rattle cage, giving my mercenary a bunch of crushing blow, which is going to make my boss fights that much nicer. With prep completed, it's time to go and see if I can do hell without vitality. I run into a bunch of quill rats to check my damage. Yup, seems fine, except for the part where I lose over half my health, in mere seconds everything seems to be working as hoped. Same on the second pack, my life total is basically a yo-yo, but things that aren't me seem to be dying, and that's okay, that's enough. With the strange idea that I might actually make it, I go ahead and clear the den of evil and head into the underground passage, where things take a turn for the worse. Between their might aura and my curse, I am not a big fan of the current setup we have going here. So I pull back and clear out the skeleton arches in the back first. With those gone, I start luring things out one by one. I take a couple hundred damage every time I get hit, but they are dying and I am surviving, so I'll take it. And do you know what would have made this a thousand times easier if I had remembered taunt exists? I end up getting lucky and the skeleton with the curse and the aura walks out in front, so I take him out and go on my merry way to save Kane, barely making it out with my life. A ring with 47 of the important resists at least makes it all worth it. In the barracks, the dead clans continue to hit like a truck. I clear out the catacombs and head into the Ontario fight. And I had the bone snap on the switch and I know I could switch to it but I didn't really want to give up the 44 vitality. At this point I actually started thinking. I got this. I started believing I could do it. I started believing I could go all the way. There are a bunch of close calls, but by staying calm and focusing on my life total like it's my last meal on earth and rejuving when necessary, I make it through the fight. Act 2 started off smooth. I made my way through the desert and the Claw Viper Temple without trouble. The Maggot Lair also goes well, although I do have to use some potions to heal off the bolts from the death beetles. My spawns here ended up being amazing, I didn't get a single physical immune in the entire lair, meaning I didn't have to do any berserk shenanigans, and could just take my time getting through without any gimmicks. I still ended up almost losing it at the end though. The Arcane Sanctuary, however, was a mess. I started out by luring away the spectres and clearing them with Berserk, but because I have the patience of a crack adult hamster, I grew impatient. So I switched to kiting them away a bit and stunning them, clearing some distance to make them stop following me instead. It was a risky plan, but it was faster and that's honestly all I care about. When the spectres defeated Pratam, things got very dangerous. I set up a town portal with the idea of running back to the waypoint and TPing back, but I ended up being able to stun the spectres long enough in a corner to clear enough distance to get out of there. The goatman ended up dropping me some bramble mitts, those are laying of hands, and while my fire resist is already at maximum, the 350% damage and the 20 increased attack speed help out my berserk, so I kept it in the stash for when I needed them. Talrush's tomb was a giant mess. Everything in here has tons of physical resist, that is, if it isn't just flat out physical immune. You're taking boatloads of damage from outside your stun range, and the place is huge. And did I mention that all of the undead get revived by the unravelers? Seriously, this place is just a mess mess and I want to get through it as fast as possible. So I end up running through, saving and exiting when I reach certain death or a dead end. And to use a combination of words I never expected to say, with a sigh of relief I reach Duriel. And even though he is absolutely terrifying, at least he's here with his only friend Tom from MySpace. 
meaning he's alone. The combination of battle cry and soul runes works like a charm, and I'm able to tank his hits while Pratum tries to apply as many crushing blows as he can. With our powers combined, he goes down without a problem, netting me the most Turiel of Turiel drops of all time. Speaking about things dropping though, I don't know what was up with Act 3, but I was all here for it. The Spider Force was basically Santa's factory, with the amount of gifts coming my way. It starts off with a thorned hulk making me appreciate the gift of life, which in and of itself is a gift. I repay their kindness and they drop me a jade figurine, which I gladly accept, because having more health is a better plan than not having more health. I know, this is the kind of commentary you're here for. I find a second bone snap from a group of thorned hog, however it ends up lower on the enhanced damage than the one I have. An alcove in the spider forest is where I actually start hitting the jackpot. A random cloud stalker drops me a unique crusader bow, which of course is an eagle horn. And I didn't even cut it because I just wanted to show how close this is. Literal seconds later, cloud stalkers rocket to being my new favorite enemy in the game as one of them drops me a burr horn. But as I explained earlier, burr runes are trash, so off to armors it goes. The drops continue with a unique ogre maul in the spider cavern, which is the wind hammer. And I actually think I made a mistake here, cause I'm not specking into vitality, meaning I could very easily have respect for the 225 strength to use it instead of a bone snap, which would have been a massive upgrade damage wise. However, like any sane person, when I see a strength requirement of 225, I just automatically assume it's a no go, because getting to that much strength is insane in any normal kind of run. Even with a hell rune in there, you would need a 180 strength. I only realized during editing that I could have easily gone for it and it would have probably been better as well because when I have a smaller mana pool I also get rid of the blood mana curse as well. I also end up finding a bone you which can be an amazing mercenary weapon in its own right but I prefer keeping the meditation aura from the inside and also Pratum doesn't have the strength to wear it. Seriously though the stat requirements on melee items and especially high end melee items in this game is absolutely nuts. Like they could go minus 20% requirements on every single melee item in the game and it would still be pretty high for some of them. In the Great Marsh I start having a gloomy outlook on life. I use the environment as a wall to stop me from getting electrocuted. The only upside to clones is that they have small health pools like me, so when you get them stunned they go down quickly. Staying very true to my roots, I try and go one bridge too far in the Flayer jungle. Which isn't really a joke, I actually live in Arnhem, which is where Operation Market Garden happened. Luckily, the occupant flayers aren't as battle hardened as back then, and I managed to squeeze a great Polex out of their possession. The jungle really is Santa's playground, as the great Polex turns out to have 4 sockets, meaning Pratum gets a nice and new shiny inside. The lower Kuras is an amazing place to find skillers, demonstrated here by me finding a Jav skiller in the literal first chest I open. My sewer map is amazing, but I still manage to almost fuck it up and die because Icehawk is way scarier when your health pool is 1000 instead of 3000. I make a judgement call that I can tank at least one doll hit and use Battlecry to take care of the rest of them. Just like a nightmare, I think the best strategy is to just blitzkrieg the council. So I run in and start stunning things. It works out beautifully as I manage to stun luck most of them. The Durance of Hate is once again filled with dolls. I use Kiting, Pratam and my range advantage to well my advantage and take care of them. Not gonna lie though, it looks pretty easy like this because you're only seeing them dying and just me controlling them and taking a very calculated hit, but during playing this it felt like playing to a goddamn minefield. This was so nerve wracking to clear the dolls. A chest drops me a 31 life crown shot, usually not something that will make the cut in a video, but for this one it means 31 life plus my bow buff, netting me almost a 10% boost to my entire pool. The Mephisto fight isn't too bad, my resists are amazing and the strategy of battle cry with soul runes is keeping up as well, it's doing so much better than I ever could have hoped. Things become very dangerous when I walk myself into a corner in the plains of despair. I'm surrounded by idiots and there is no way out but to keep fighting, so that's exactly what I've gotta do. I end up squeaking out of the surround by the skin of my teeth, allowing me to reposition myself which still almost ends up with me getting killed. So I just stun them and leave the fight, cause one of the most important skills in playing hardcore is to know when to hold them and when to fall them, and this was a fall them moment. Pratom goes ahead and thanks Hefasto until I'm able to stun lock him. The Hellforge nets me an Omrune, I might want to use that later in the run so I don't sell it to the vendor. I get walloped in the head by some Urdars in the River of Flame, before making my way into the Chaos Sanctuary, where I basically play a game of chicken or stun luck with the monsters. 
and give the Venom Lord some synchronized swimming lessons. Even with Battlecry and the Soul Runes, which would make for a nice band name if you want to make the nerdiest band on the planet. Diablo slaps me like he's my pimp. It's a good thing he switches it up with lightning and fire attacks every once in a while, because I would have been 50 shades of dead otherwise. And with Diablo's death, it is time for the final act. I'm honestly amazed at how far I've gotten in this, but now I can taste it. I kind of just want to stay in Harrogat and be amazed at how far I've gotten, but I've got to step out of the shadows of Harrogat and make my way into the mountains. It starts off with taking down Doug Farron and Shank. Before moving on to the barricaded door that I decide to just walk around instead. In the frozen tundra, the death clans are still not to be trifled with. They even end up posing more of a threat than the ancients, whom this time I managed to fully stun lock. Well, at first. Dalek ends up breaking the stun lock and his whirlwind nearly ends up costing me my life. Following that up, I reposition myself in the fight, putting me at the mercy of Gorlick's lightning bolt. After a few seconds of this, Dalek ends up escaping again. His whirlwind once again comes very, very, very close to ending the run. The fight gets to a point where it's just me and Talik in the corner, where he proves his damage output vastly outperforms mine. Luckily, I got potions, and they don't, cause there's no way I could have won this fight without them. Gorley goes down in a crescendo of shouts, and the ancient fight is cleared. Now, I only have Bill to go. The worldstone keep goes like a dream, and since I've played this game before, I know better than to stop at the door in the throne of destruction, as I get blasted with lightning beams upon entry. One of the biggest problems with getting blasted is that because my HP is so low, I get put into hit recovery, meaning that they can even get a second hit in while I run for safety. It also only took until the throne of destruction in hell for me to remember that I have a skill called taunt. This ability makes monsters come at me instead of messing around in the distance, allowing me to shout them to death. This ability allows me to clear out the rest of the throne room and the bale waves. I wasn't able to defeat Lister though because I got bored of how little damage I was doing to him, so I ended up luring him away before clearing out the final obstacles on my way to bale. The bale fight was rough, the blood mana curse still messes with me a ton and at this point I'm just scared to switch out of the double spirit. I want to keep my vitality sticks at all costs. The fight starts out with him randomly teleporting around, which isn't too dangerous, allowing me and Pratham to chip away at his life total. The best I can hope for is for him to just get stuck and let Pratham do the crushing blow talk game. Towards the end of the fight, he spawns a clone, but Bale was very well behaved during this fight. So I gave him a cookie and then kill him, and with that, it is done. I have beaten Diablo 2 hardcore without vitality as a barbarian. I honestly never expected to get this far. My goal was normal, but the build just never stopped being good. There were tons of close calls and so many moments that with just a critical hit or some bad luck would have ended the run right then and there, but they didn't. So I got there. As I'm showcasing my gear on the screen, I have to admit, I got pretty lucky. While I don't have any super amazing high end items, all of my gear is in the good to very good range, and more importantly, I don't think any of my items are bad, which is always a good sign. I never ended up feeling safe enough to switch away from the spirits, fearing that the loss of life from them would be the end of me, and especially during the ancient fight, that would have full on been the case, resulting in the bone snap barely being used, but it was there if I wanted it, which was nice. Skill wise, it was war cry, battle orders and battle cry, with some taunt at the end. I also put a ton of skill points into natural resistances, and like I mentioned already, I have one in berserk and one in concentrate, but ended up not really using them. I have the perfect amount of vitality, 69, which is 44 from the two spirits, which means my base is still at 25. Pratham has an insight, a face of horror and a rattle cage. And just to show it off properly, I toss the spirits on the ground for a bit. So as you can see, there you have it, 25 base vitality, meaning I did not put a single point in during the entire run. I'm amazed and very happy and kind of proud that I got this far. And here it is, Guardian on the no vitality barbarian. First try as well. Not even joking, this was my first attempt at this. But with that, the run comes to an end. If you enjoyed the content, please consider subscribing or even becoming a member. And once again, a big thank you to the YouTube members and Patreons. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye bye.